membership of partners, uh, staff, uh, people who use these children's centres. I think the overwhelming feeling amongst them is that the, the consultation process that went in to the formulation of this review was anything but a consultation process. Chair, um, basically, I think we, we all share a view, and the cabinet member in the forward to the uh, to the review did say that you know, he is a strong advocate of the early years education and what that can achieve. So, you know, my, my views on the council really have been marked by cross political thinking on this issue and the fact that early years is an incredibly important issue and we should strive to achieve the best for our children at the very earliest possible age. So then, Chair, given, given that cross-party view, I think it, it's a very important that we look again at this review and examine it in detail. And I'm sure, Chair, you will do <coughs> this evening as will all members. <coughs> Chair, I, I have an awkward feeling of, of deja vu, unfortunately, when, when reading the review. It seems to take all the boxes in terms of the, um, the increasing image of perhaps strategic thinking, partnership forging, and all the other particular and rather peculiar phrases <coughs> that us as a local government tend to use. But Chair, we must ask the question, has this really happened with this review? The fact is, you will hear from the witnesses I will call that the partners we supposedly are working with, and indeed from whom we make commission services, feel completely left out. They feel that they have been walking <coughs> into a consultation process they weren't even told they were part of. <coughs> Chair, our staff also feel badly let down. They quite rightly assert that the review reflects little on the vital work undertaken by the existing short stocks and children's centres, and they feel that their crucially important work has been undermined by the review. Chair, respectfully, I would suggest that this review has been more about swinging cuts rather than producing a credible and ambitious plan and or a review produced collaboratively with partners and staff so that we can all work together to ensure that early years remains a priority for the council. Chair, the cabinet member, as I mentioned previously in his forward to the report, speaks of a consensus between partners and staff, but the fact is that the cabinet's decision has fundamentally failed this consensus and has done much to seriously undermine it. This is not an evidence-based review an attempt to imitate another authority whose circumstances may be widely different to the challenges this forum faces. Chair, I trust you will listen to the evidence of the witness carefully, and I will obviously sum up there at the end. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Fixed pension costs of 
cost of living. Supplies, services, and premises cost of 1.6 million and recharges of 0.6 million. The current funding cuts required 2014-16 forms part of the detailed review, the outcomes of which will guarantee savings from premises, supplies, services, and early years of staffing. 0.5 million as a percentage of the 2 million required in 2014 has already been reduced as a one-year savings through vacancy factor and streamlining commissions will be managed as a permanent reduction through the review. What we're left with is 2.3 million, which is the controllable budget going forward. So in addition, and in line with the council's financial position, further potential budget reductions are anticipated for services going forward. Funding has not been the only motivator to influence the review of the borough's early years and children's centres. The early years service, which is, which, is, which is responsible for the children's centres, has not been subject to re a review since the <coughs> inception of the children's offer around 2002. I would like the committee to note Sorry, I just need to note that the uh, current practice and approach to the delivery of the early year services, which evolved through the implementation of children's centres, has not been duly considered for many years, as I said, since 2002. Practice and approach, which does not reflect well enough, changes the government guidance, which came out in 2013 to deliver to local needs and work with the most disadvantaged are changes to the local targeted prevention of early health. The regulatory framework, partnership requirements, the changing demography in rural, or the resulting change in the needs of family are not currently drivers for the delivery of the services offered. In addition, funding and resource imbalance exist based on a historic not current position and as a consequence of the salami slicing approach to previous, to previous cuts. The review acknowledges that the local authority values the extensive range of partners and the significant contributions they made to the children's centre offer. The council recognises the work carried out to improve the life chances and outcomes for young children and their families and that it will continue to rely heavily on them in the future. It makes a distinction between all partners and those who have a regulatory duty defined in the Child Care Act 2006. Okay, the apprenticeship skills journey and name the health and job centre class. Um, in short, I would like to say, Chair, that the early years of children's centre service and a general, general approach are out of step. However, I have every confidence that the implementation of the review will redress the current position and ensure, ensure that the service going forward will ensure that proven best practice becomes common practice. Thank you, Chair. Um, um, uh, now, Councillor Bedford. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to
um, 40% cut in budgets. I was reading a report yesterday that said we're actually only, only halfway through austerity. So um, the reality is we are witnessing, um, I think, unprecedented cuts in local services under this government. And inevitably, um, that will impact on local authorities like ours. I, and, you know, I think it's it's interesting that the government have cut the, um, uh, what was a ring fence grant for children's centres by a third. The early years intervention grants, which had used to come to this authority, I think it was somewhere in the region of 11 million, has been completely cut um, from our budget. So we, we are witnessing a, what I would call, regard as a scorched earth approach. And the reason why I think it's so um, uh, damaging is because this is being done in a way that hits those parts of the country with the highest levels of deprivation. So areas of the north uh, of England have suffered, and councils in the north of England, like Wirral, have suffered by far the greatest level of cuts compared to more affluent areas in the town. Don't take my word for it, just uh, uh, read a recent report by the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, which published research uh, stating, and I quote, cuts in spending power and budgeted spend are systematically greater in more deprived local authorities than in more affluent ones. So the reality is, Chair, we have to make some very difficult decisions about our services going forward in the wake of these huge deputy managing cuts. I believe um, they, are, they are profoundly misguided, but as leader of the council, uh, and as the leader of the administration, we have to make the books balance. And therefore, to think that we can just go on providing services <coughs> in exactly the way that we've always done for the last 30 years is frankly nonsense. So I think this is this report is a, is a sensible start of the 10, and it's a start of the 10 because it's going to be a six week consultation. Uh, so the consultation that Councillor Hayes was referring to is actually pre consultation consultation. So this is, a, I think, a sensible start of the 10 to begin to look how we can reshape the services provided by our children's centres to make sure that we, we stay within a vastly reduced funding envelope that we currently have. Um, now, you know, I'm not going to sit here tonight and say we got it 100% right. That's exactly why we're about to go into a six week consultation exercise to say here's a model that will uh, uh, enable us to live within our means uh, and still hopefully deliver good quality outputs and outcomes. So, you know, so this is the start of the consultation process um, that I think is, is um, eminently sensible. I, I just want to see how you can how really, how really disagree with that and go through the consultation. Um, I think finally, Chair, um, I'm, I'm sort of quoted in this call it um, by Councillor Hayes. I mean, what, what I've said uh, on a number of occasions, uh, actually, this, 